Hey, hey, you guys. It's Holly Go Lately. Welcome back. Look where we are again. It's my perfume closet. It's kind of messy because right now it's my perfume business space. If you haven't heard about that n- announcement, you will hear about it soon. I am doing the 10 for life tag that's been going around. I know that this is the um, designer and niche version, but I've expanded it. Not there. I still have 10, but I am doing designer niche and indie mostly because I didn't have five niche fragrances, um, that were like lifers or I, I didn't really either have five designer fragrances that were lifers. So we added some indie in there. So if you're interested in those, just keep watching. All right, so I didn't know exactly how to start. I didn't know which ones to start with. So I'm taking the easy route and I'm just going to start with the designers. Um, The first one, actually, I feel like nothing, (laughs) nothing should be a surprise to anyone because I've talked these all so much. Like I've just been crazy about them for so long that it shouldn't be like a big surprise, but the big reveal, my number one for life, always, 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 there's literally no other scent that I would give up to have this is Terry McGlair Angel. It's sweet, but it's just right there on the edge of being too sweet because I have mentioned that like the super sweet like pink sugar, La Via Bell, like even um like the sweeter parts of flower bomb, black opium, they're too much. They're a little much for me. I I'm sure a lot of people believe or would consider Angel to be just as sweet as those fragrances, but the chemical p- compound that makes that sweet note is actually um, less in Angel than it is in those other sweeter fragrances. So Angel's like the perfect sweet, sweet fragrance for my taste. Not only that, it has amazing scent memories attached to it. I've loved it all my life. Like, well, as, as long as it's been out and it just reminds me of Paris. It reminds me of being young and youthful and having a wonderful time. Um, and it reminds me of being safe and being in a place where I felt safe. So for me, Angel by Terry McGuire is my number one for life designer, niche, indie, and anything. My number two designer for life is one that I have worn and loved almost as long as Angel. It is Mont Blanc Presence de Femme. Oh, I don't know what you can see reflected down there, but sorry. Um, This particular bottle is a newer bottle, but I've had several of them. I think I've had three bottles of this and I used one. The second got, um, destroyed in a fire. And the third is this one. This I'll always repurchase. I'll always have. When I went to go repurchase it, I was actually really afraid that it had been discontinued because it wasn't in department stores anymore. Um, but I bought it from the Mont Blanc store in Las Vegas, uh, before that was back when I wasn't really into perfumes as much as I am now. And I didn't know about, on discount sites like Fragrance Net or Fragrance X. Um, This was $85. So, but yeah, I freaking, it just smells so good. It smells like a wear anywhere, do anything. It's like a boss bitch fragrance for me. This is my confidence in a bottle fragrance. The next designer one, again, I have loved almost as long as... The other two. Um, I got married in 2002. So I actually knew this fragrance longer than I've known the father of my children. <laughs> um, it's Givenchy Pohom. It's that red bottle, red label, the original. So this is just a masculine woody scent. It's not super complex. There's not a lot of notes in here. 
Um, but I think that on anyone, man or woman, it just smells so fresh and woody and clean. But on a man especially, it really brings out a lot of warmth in the, a man's skin. And I think it just makes men smell so good. Like, hmm, so, so good. So Givenchy Paul Homme, this has also been discontinued, but you can still find it online. I have a backup um, and I will continue to buy it as long as I'm able. And then the most recent addition to my designer faves for life is Nux Prodigies Le Parfum. Oh my God, I love this. How come it took me so long to find this? I mean, I have so many people to thank for putting me onto this. Mila LeBlanc, Gabrielle Francesca, Mojan. I think all of them have talked about it. Others too. And thank God, thank God for Fragcom because this is a love of my life type of fragrance and I would never have even known it ex existed if it weren't for other perfume tubers <laughs> talking about it. So I, I mean, <sighs> the tuberose, the just white floral frangipani, some white, the, it's white and yellow florals. It's just, it smells so classy. It's perfect for spring, summer, but I just wear it whenever I feel like, look like I feel like smelling pretty. So ugh, yeah, that's what this does for me. It makes me feel like I smell pretty. So those were the four that I have for designers. So move on to, um, niche with one that I always kind of think of it as a designer, but it is niche and, um, so I almost had to actually put it in the designer sense. And I was like, no, it's, it's this niche. And that is bond number nine, Nuit de Noho. This is like Angel's grown up big sibling. I feel like it's a very, they're a very gender neutral sibling. Um, this is slightly, slightly more masculine than Angel, but it has the same sort of feel. It has the same sort of vibe, like the chocolatey, um, patch, <laughs> the chocolatey patchouli DNA feeling about the scent. Um, this is what I would wear in, uh, conjunction with Angel. If I were going to go from like day to night, this to me is not a super strong nighttime fragrance, but if you punch it up with Nuit de Noho, you get such an amazing scent. So for me, this, of course I like it because it smells like Angel, but I think that it really adds something extra to the, your perfumed wardrobe, um, especially if you are an Angel fan, having Nui de Noho in your collection will give you that extra extra for when you want to wear Angel, but you want extra. Next is the newest one I have. I've mentioned it briefly in my September haul. Yeah, my September haul, and it's Creed Royal Oud. Clemence from Clemence CC Fragrance put me onto this and God, she was so right. This is a gorgeous fragrance. It's a sandalwood fragrance. Despite being called Royal Oud, I can smell just a, just a hint of Oud, which is very, very nice because I like the smell of Oud, but when it's very strong, um, it does have that effect where it feels like it's burning out my nostrils and sinuses. So I just can't wear it. But this oud is like a faint whisper that brushes across the sandalwood. And then you're left with just something very rich, beautiful, intoxicating, very gender neutral, especially if you like woodier type of fragrances, but just gorgeous. So I've tried quite a few fragrances from Creed. Um, right now, this is my favorite. I'm not 100% sure that I will like it more than Millicene Imperial once I get that. Um, I also want to pick up Royal Mayfair. Um, but for niche, for life, from what I have, it would definitely be Creed Royal Oud. And the last niche scent, 
I would hope that you knew was coming, but maybe I haven't really like made it clear how much I love this fragrance. And that is Amber Aurea by Profumo Roma. This is the best amber fragrance, the be like the best amber fragrance. I don't know who says other amber fragrances are the best amber fragrances. They've not smelled this. This is the best. <laughs> We are all having our own subjective opinions on things, you guys, so don't take it too seriously. I know that your best is your best, and that's fine. Um, but Amber Array, I can't, I actually, um, I haven't put the uh, atomizer in. I've just decanted some into the rollerball. So this is just rich, thick, sexy, delicious amber. And this has been out since like the 90s, like 94, 98 or something like that. So it's this has been around. And if people are still sleeping on it, I was. And I knew when I, like the moment it hit my, no my nose, I was like, holy shit, I've been missing something all my life. But Amber Orea layered with Creed Royal Oud makes the most amazing fragrance. Um, you smell like royalty. You smell like legit royalty. Like that's what I imagine that Queen Victoria smelled like, or like just, you know, royals from the old, old days. So good. Smells amazing. Smells a little bit like skin, a little bit like body, but I personally enjoy a bit of body odor in a fragrance, especially a deeper fragrance. So if that's something that you want to stay away from, if you want to be totally fresh and clean, clean, um, you know, maybe not do that. But for me, I think it's double chef's kiss. And now for the last three, which are the indie fragrances. Um, yeah, <laughs> I was like, it was going to be, I was going to be like, you should know what these are. You should know already. But I feel like maybe, um, I have a lot of new viewers, a lot of new subscribers. Thank you guys. Welcome. Welcome. Um, so maybe you haven't heard me talk about them before. So I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not going to be like that. The first one is from the brand Darling Clandestine, who is one of my faves in the indie perfume world. She's such a wonderful person. Her creations are um, just a magic, like she creates magic and this is no, no different. It is called supernova sway. It, this is a hot metallic floral cement sort of fantasy fragrance that smells like summer in the city. Um, you know that old song from like the sixties or seventies where I was like in summer in the city in the summer in the city they get demonetized not monetized um but that's this is that scent that's the scent of this this is hot metal summertime heat rising off the concrete flowers wilting in the window box and somebody kicking open like kicking the cap off of the fire hydrant and water just ozonic hot metal florals green wet it's just stunning. Um, this is not available now, but I'm really hoping that she'll choose to do this as, um, one of her pre-orders upcoming. And if she does, I'll let you guys know on Instagram, which my Instagram's down below, or if I have a video coming up, I'll mention it there. The next one is one that is discontinued. So this is going to have to be for the life of how long I can make the vials that I have left last. Um, it's from Coco Pink and it's in the scent Black Blood. I am broken hearted. Oh, it's a rich amber base with a sweet blood orange top. And on the skin, it just, it smells like freaking heaven. I'm, like I said, I'm devastated that it was discontinued. I believe it was discontinued due to a component issue. Um, or perhaps it was discontinued due to a lack of interest. I'm not sure because on the website, uh, they do list this under the, like the discontinue, no plans to return. Um, it's sick. It's sick. It's sick. Like, do you remember when people said that? It's so rich and sexy. It's an elevated type of scent that you wouldn't think you paid. I these vials are ten are like five five fifty each. Um, 
you can get five for $25. Um, and that's what I did. So that's why I have quite a few backups, but you wouldn't think that that's the scent that you're smelling. Mine are all in alcohol, by the way. Um, Coco Pink, if you decide to order from them, gives you the choice to order in perfume oil or in perfumer's alcohol. I always order in perfumer's alcohol because I think their fragrances work better that way. But you could definitely try a mixture and see. But as for indie perfumes for life, Coco Pink Black Blood is definitely going to be living its best life until I run out of it with me. Oh, I love it. And then the last, but absolutely not least, one of my top, top favorite fragrances of all time is Vice from House of Gloy. I've talked about this before. This is the ultimate, gourl gourl this is the ultimate gourmand lover's gourmand. But it has a very beautiful coffee note that keeps it from being super sweet. It is like graham crackers, like toasted marshmallows, chocolate, um, graham cracker crust, like crumbles, and then bitter coffee. This is the fragrance. When I think of a gourmand fragrance, this is what I think of. Something that literally smells like the things you want to eat put down in front of you. It's so good. If you like gourmand, if you like chocolate, if you like coffee fragrances, please do yourself a favor and pick up a vial of Vice. You can get it in the alcohol format or you can get it in oil format. But if you decide to test the alcohol format, you can get, I think, a five mil sample for $8. I'm going to link it down below if you're a gourmand lover. Do yourself a favor and try it, especially if you like a coffee scent. If you like a coffee scent, please, please try. So that, my friends, is my top 10 for life perfume edition designer niche and indie. I hope that you enjoyed. I wonder how many of you were surprised by any of those picks. If there was anything that surprised you, let me know down below. Um, Otherwise, I guess that wraps up this video. Thank you so much for being here. Make sure to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed. If you want to leave me a comment, I'd be happy to respond. I love talking to you guys in the comments. And also, please subscribe if you haven't already because I really appreciate it. It makes me feel just warm inside. And, you know, that's always a nice thing, especially during these crazy, crazy times. <laughs> anyway, you guys, I'm going to go spray on all of these at once. I'll tell you how it goes. And I hope to see you on the next video. Okay. Bye.